Okay, and any representative of petition 4525, please identify yourself for the record. Was that the petitioners? Yes. This is for petitioners now. Yes, and please unmute your uh, oh, mic. The petitioner. Yeah. Anybody that's on the line that's representing the petitioner? Uh, Lori oh, Rigby, okay. City of Oceanside. Thank you. Scott Spiegel, City of Oceanside. Ryan Williams, City of Oceanside. Rudy Guzman, City of Oceanside. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so we will now move to the administrative items. Thank you so very much. I mean, so we actually have, you know, I mean, first of all, on the list, I mean, the approval of minute orders for November 18th, 2021. Uh, are there any comments from the members of the board? I do have one comment, Chair, and that is that we had a long discussion about this at the last meeting and I was just looking at the, the write-up and it said without temporary repairs, maintain chemical usage upstream. And I, I might've missed this when we were putting the notes together. I just wanna confirm that, that we'd indicated if the, the blower is not operational, that they're not pumping chemicals into the system. That That is correct. I mean, Bill, I mean, that okay. was one of those elements, you know, however, that I was gonna comment on that because certainly there is no gain, I mean, that to making that a condition. Do you agree? Oh, could you repeat that, Chair? I mean, on the chemicals. I mean, that they would not be a benefit, I mean, to maintaining those chemicals upstream, you know, so. Correct. It should be deleted. I mean, that was the discussion. That was my very same comment as well. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, so I just wanna clarify that this was under um, conditions to be met by petitioner during the interim variance period. It was under section B. Is that what you're referring to, um, member powers? Correct. Okay, so that was number three. Okay, so I will delete that then from um, the minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, thank you so very much. I mean, that Bill, I mean, the same comment here. Uh, are there any other comments from the members of the board? Any comments from the APCD? For clarification. Oh, I have a comment. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, I no. have a comment, and that is that the minute orders, uh, the minute orders, the administrative item A, are not um, included on the public facing web page. Um, you mean the approval of the statement of proceedings? Administrative item A? Yeah, the draft statement of proceedings, those are on the SharePoint, but, um, but they're not <coughs> in the, only the agenda and then it jumps to administrative item B on the public facing side. Okay, so with that, the um, meeting minutes are posted. If you scroll down on the page, they're posted on their own separate um, section. So I only post them there, but going forward, oh, okay. I can post them um, as an attachment to the agenda. So if you look at our web page, you'll see that I post oh, I the see. agenda okay. at the top. Yes. And then I post okay. under that just the petition documents and any other additional documents that are related to the administrative items. I do post those with the agenda at the top of the page. But um, if it would make it easier for reference, I could also post those minutes going forward as an attachment to that agenda. Okay, yeah, I mean, I do see now the hearing board draft um, uh, statement of proceedings from November 18th. It was just in a separate spot. So I just wanted to make sure it was available to the public. Thanks. Yes, and like I said, I will include that um, going forward with as an attachment with the agenda. I appreciate definitely know that uh, point. I mean, Member Schlick, I mean, and certainly the action that you're taking, I mean, Don, uh, because uh, it is a lot easier rather than to scroll down just to see it as a one package, what is everything gonna be seeing you know, for that meeting? So I, I definitely like you know, that approach better as well. Okay, so, will do. Yeah, thank you so very much. I mean, the, so if, if there are no other comments, I mean, the, uh, uh, do then I get uh, uh, a motion 
to accept, you know, I mean, the million dollars with the revision just made. I would make that motion. Do I get a second? I'm happy to second. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, Chair Rodriguez. Yes. Member Hurst. Yes. Member Powers. Yes. Member Schlick. Yes. And Member Spencer. Yes. Okay, um, that motion passes with all members being present and voting aye, and I will incorporate the um, changes that um, <clears throat> were brought up during the discussion. Thank you so very much. Uh, then let's move actually to item B. I mean, the, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, I believe you know that that it's pretty much, uh, we need to vote on this as well. So you need to read, I guess, these statements. Um, yes. Yeah, so. Item B is the continuance of teleconferencing meeting option pursuant to government code section 54953E. Um, I can bring that up on the board. This was actually, I mean, actually on the screen. And so this was actually brought forth by our um, council, Emily Helms. So I want to hand the floor over to her in case she has anything to add to this. But I will pull that up on the screen right now for all to see. Thank you. You know, um, I'm sorry, it went out for a little bit. Um, would you mind repeating that? Uh <laughs> oh, I was just asking if there was anything that you wanted to um, add to the discussion of the continuance of, of teleconferencing for item B. Oh, no, nothing to add unless, but I'm available for questions. Thank you. Okay. So I guess now that the action in front of us, you know, I mean, is to approve, you know, have a motion for approval of the continuance of the teleconferencing. Uh, meeting option. I'll move to approve the teleconferencing option. And I'll second. Uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, thank you, Chair Rodriguez. Um, so I will now call the roll. Chair Rodriguez? Yes. Member Hurst? Yes. Member Powers? Yes. Member Schlick? Yes. And Member Spencer. That motion passes with all members being present and voting yes to continue the teleconferencing a meeting um, of the hearing board. Okay. Thank you so very much. And now I know the last administrative item on the list, I mean, on today's agenda is the approval of the 2022 hearing board meeting calendar. Uh, that was uh, provided to us as well. You know, I mean, as part of the packet, we vote on it every single year. Uh, so if you actually had the opportunity to review, I mean, that please let me know if there are needs not for revisions, I mean, if that need be. But, you know, this is pretty standard that we actually do in the last meeting of the prior year. So any comments on the calendar? No comments. Okay. If that is the case, I mean, do I get a motion to approve the 2022 hearing board meeting calendar? I would motion to approve. Thank you. Second? I'm happy to second. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Okay, thank you, Chair Rodriguez. I will now call the roll. Chair Rodriguez? Yes. Member Hurst? Yes. Member Powers? Yes. Member Schlick? Yes. Member Spencer? Yes. Okay, that motion passes um, with all members being present and voting yes to approve the 2022 hearing board meeting calendar. I mean, that excellent. So thank you so very much. I mean, everybody. Uh, now we pretty much now have uh, how it is that we're gonna be completing, I mean, the, our calendars for next year, you know, I mean, the, those meetings, so that's good. Uh, so let's actually move you know, to the petitions for today. We only have one petition, you know, that is 4525. And I will allow, you know, Madam Clerk, you know, to read, I mean, the, the premise, you know, for why it is that we are here today with the city of Oceanside, Madam Clerk. Okay, before we move on to the petition, I would like to note for the record that there is no public communication and that no one has submitted any public comments um, for the meeting today. So, um, the petition before us is petition 4525 for the city of Oceanside wastewater treatment plant. The petitioner is requesting a regular variance from the conditions of permit APCD 2006-PTO-920530 until November 18th of 2022. 
This is due to a breakdown of a blower associated with an air pollution control device at their wastewater treatment plant located at 3950 North River Road in Oceanside, California. Um, I just also want to note that the clerk of the board received a presentation from the petitioner this morning um, that they would like to present and the board would need to vote whether to accept this additional presentation from petitioner or not. No, I mean, thank you, Madam Clerk. You know, I mean, that's so that's what we were checking out this morning. I mean, so frantically. So that's what uh, Don was actually doing. Uh, just not, I mean, that as a reminder and a little bit of history, I mean, here, a petitioner has been in front of the board pretty much about three times, I mean, officially. Uh, one as an emergency experience. The next, no, I mean, the one they were presented here last time uh, for the interim to the regular variants, you know, I mean, that both of those were granted. Uh, petitioner was also, I mean, uh, advice, I mean, to provide material, I mean, for this uh, presentation today and this request uh, uh, prior, I mean, the, to uh, today's meeting, uh, but it is up to us to definitely accept uh, or not, I mean, their, uh, you know, submission, you know, which was actually last minute, um, uh, unfortunately. And you know, also, uh, but nonetheless, I mean, the, today, you know, what in front of us, you no, know, we need to make the six findings, you know, I mean, according to the health and safety code. And certainly, I mean, a lot of weight, I mean, has to be given not only, you know, about the fact of the benefit, I mean, that to uh, the petitioner, but also to the corresponding benefit to the environment. Uh, and further, I mean, as a reminder, uh, even though it's very prevalent in all of our minds, I mean, the petitioner is also is classified as an essential public service. You know, so uh, we certainly, I mean, the petitioner has, you know, the burden of proof, you know, I mean, that to uh, present to us uh, a hearing that is complete and concise, uh, but yet, you know, I mean, with the historical uh, um, presentations that we have had, and, uh, and I dare say coaching to the petitioner, I definitely look forward, I mean, to something that is fairly comprehensive and then uh, it is uh, expeditionally implemented, uh, but it actually also looks at the preventative action, not just at the corrective action. So uh, with that, however, I'm gonna ask, I mean, the, uh, Ms. Rigby, uh, uh, just, I mean, a couple of questions before we actually, you know, I mean, decide whether or not to vote. And of course, I mean, that the other members of the, uh, of the board, I mean, can actually ask questions. Uh, uh, Ms. Rigby, I mean, the, so I would like you know, to know, I mean, the, a couple of things. One, uh, succinctly, I mean, that why it took, you know, the city of Oceanside, I mean, this long uh, to provide, I mean, that said material. I mean, the, uh, and number two, according, I mean, the, to the ARB uh, and all the other presentations, if you present uh, the material verbally, I mean, the, there should not be any need you know, for additional material to be presented today and accepted. So, I mean, the, again, uh, why did it take this long? And uh, can you actually provide verbally, I mean, that the information that is needed for the hearing board to make a decision? All right, well, thank you, Chair Rodriguez. To answer your first question, uh, we would have not had the same level of updates had the materials been presented earlier, we wouldn't have had POs, we wouldn't have ordered the blower. So any material we presented to you would have been incorrect. Um, so we had a lot of movement yesterday, which is a lot of good news. So I've updated the materials to be reflective of the conditions as of this morning. So this is kind of um, a constantly variable process depending on approvals and orders and who's been talking. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the materials presented today are the most up to date. And that is why I've been communicating with both Heather and Mary on the schedule and why we're waiting to provide this material. Um, to answer your second question, I can do this verbally, but I have provided um, a couple of drawings that I think would benefit the board to see. We can describe those verbally as we did with Heather and Mary Mahoney last week. But if they'd like to see the visuals, they are there in the event that they choose to see them. So that's the answer to your questions. No, I mean, that's certainly, I appreciate, I mean, you addressing them. I mean, the, uh, I know that timelines change by the hour, <laughs> but I would have definitely preferred uh, to have something to see, you know, that would beef up, you know, certainly the, the aspects you now going forward from the city of Oceanside. I mean, but I'm only one person, I mean, of five. 
uh, yes, no, I mean, that, that's, that's where I stand. Are there any questions or comments from other members of the board? Uh, just one comment. I, I know that December 7th was a big, a big day to potentially inaugurate this uh, replacement blower. So I'm very interested in, in the update. Okay. Uh, any, any feedback coming I mean, from the members of the board? I mean, whether or not, I mean, we want to accept, you know, the uh, uh, packet that was provided last minute you know, by the petitioner. Members, um, I, I think it would be good to accept it because um, the more information we have, the better. And, and as long as um, we understand it all and it, it doesn't look too surprising or anything, um, uh, then, then I don't see um, any real harm in it. Good. Uh, so is that your motion, I mean, Member Schlick? Yes. Okay. You know, I mean, if that is so, I mean, do I get a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, I will now call the roll. Chair Rodriguez. Yes. Member Hurst. Yes. Member Powers. Yes. Member Schlick. Yes. And Member Spencer. Yes. Okay, that motion passes with all members being present and voting yes. So the doc, the PowerPoint presentation will be accepted into record um, for this meeting as attachment A. Um, I also would like to note before we move on to the actual petition that I was in receipt of um, an additional presentation from the district. Um, that is a PowerPoint presentation that they sent to me late yesterday. Um, and I'm sorry, I did not see it till this morning because I had left work early. So um, we will need to also review and vote on that. That, that. that is so true. You know, I mean, that's so, I think, you know, in the matter of fairness, I mean, if each one actually has a presentation, we should accept, you know, I mean, that presentation as well. So I would actually move, you know, to also, accept you know, the uh, presentation provided by the APCD. Do I get a second? Second. Oh, second. Member Spencer, second. I mean that, Madam Clerk. Okay, I will now call the roll. Chair Rodriguez? Yes. Member Hurst? Yes. Member Powers? Yes. Member Schlick? Yes. And Member Spencer? Yes. Okay, thank you. That motion passes with all members being present and voting yes. Um, the documentation from the district that was received yesterday afternoon will be entered into the record as attachment B. Well, thank you so very much, Madam Clerk. I mean, now that all the administrative items, you know, I mean, have been taken care of, you know, so we actually can get to the substance of this hearing, you know, and I cannot wait. Uh, so I am certainly going to follow, I mean, the order. Uh, and uh, we, again, as I've said before, we're very familiar, which is really very good. I mean, for the question and answer session that we have, and I'm gonna allow, you know, the APCD, I mean, to continue making their presentation first and then followed, you know, by Ms. Rigby so that in that way, um, I guess, petitioner, I mean, so that in that way, you know, there is, uh, we are addressing, you know, the concerns that the APCD has, and also how it is that we can actually uh, get, you know, to um, uh, an agreement, I mean, uh, for this variant, should it be granted. I mean, so I believe, you know, I mean, that Heather is ready for the presentation, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct, Heather? Don't forget to unmute yourself. There you yes, go. I am ready. Thank you for the reminder to unmute. <laughs> then if that is the case, please proceed. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for bringing up my prepared visual aids as well, Madam Clerk. And I am going to please uh, forward to the next slide. Thank you. I'm going to give a very brief update now on how the petitioner is meeting the conditions of the interim variance and milestones, as well as the district's recommendations for a regular variance. The petitioner has been submitting weekly reports noting that the aeration basin has remained covered. Additionally, the petitioner has been reporting odor complaints daily as they are received by their administration. The petitioner has received four odor complaints during the interim variance. Investigations by the petitioner and district into the first odor complaint noted no odors, no operational abnormalities or compliance issues and have a potential alternative source of odor was identified. The district's investigation into the second odor complaint 
noted faint to moderate sewage odors at the address of the complaint and moderate to severe odors at the plant gate. The district is working on investigating the third and fourth complaints, which we were notified of yesterday afternoon. The petitioner reported that in response to the recent complaints, the plant operations staff took hydrogen sulfide readings throughout the plant and inspected each of the processes. The petitioner reported that odors referenced in the last three complaints were likely from maintenance and upgrade activities at the plant and not from the blower being non-operational. With respect to milestones, an application for a slightly larger replacement blower has been submitted and the replacement blower has been ordered. Additionally, the new scrub of media has been purchased and as you have heard, arrived on site yesterday. Next slide, please. Thus, moving on to the district's recommendation. Um, since the temporary repair is not operating today, um, but is expected to be operating soon, then the district does not oppose granting a regular variance for only permit condition number four and only for the equipment associated with blower 1510 until January 9th, 2022, or when the temporary repair is operational, whichever comes first, with the following continued recommendations. One, that the aeration basin remain covered during, except during maintenance. Uh, can you please, two, that the petitioner report any odor complaints by 4 p.m. daily. And three, that the petitioner submit a weekly report to myself by Friday noon on the above conditions and the operational status of the temporary repairs. Next slide, please. The district also would like to recommend that the district be notified by email one business day by 5 p.m. when the following milestones are achieved, that the operations, temporary repairs become fully operational, that the new replacement blower has been received and that the new replacement blower is operational. Thank you, that concludes my update. Uh, thank you so very much, Heather. Could you please, uh, Madam Clerk, and I'll go to the previous slide. Maybe I'm missing the point on a couple of these. Okay. First of all, I mean, the, uh, January 9th, you know, I mean, would not that be uh, the, re the replacement of the blower? But, you know, but if you actually replace the blower and the blower doesn't work properly, wouldn't that actually put, you know, I mean, petitioner at risk as well? In this case, we're talking about the repair blower um, mm -hmm. and hopefully the repair blower, from what I've heard, should, should be operational. Um, it is my understanding that it could go either way, that the district could um, go ahead and make a recommendation for the variance to end by January 9th or the repair blower working or that um, in which case it would end and then they would need an emergency variance um, if the repair does not work. Um, that there are two alternative paths to be taken here. But Mary and or Dan could um, elaborate on that more. Dan has his hand raised. I mean, Mr. Plotner, go ahead, please. I mean, the, any information that you can provide in the matter. Uh, you see my concern on this one, I believe. I mean, because I could actually do this repair, you know, I mean, but upon, I mean, operation, I mean, there may be something that needs to be adjusted or something like that. Or uh, I think, you know, that there's an element of risk, you know, I mean, uh, if that date, I mean, is definitely set in stone. Uh, but go ahead, you know, Mr. Plutner. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I think I do see your concern. And our concern is that the regular variance could extend for up to a year. And what we want is, um, what we want to point out is that if a blower, any blower, whether it's a repaired old one or a new one, is installed and operating, the petitioner is no longer in violation. So the, we're not, if the petitioner can make the case to the board that they will be in violation down the road that they expect to be, then that would meet the finding. But, um, that would be up to the petitioner to to make that case.
Good, Amanda. So, no, thank you definitely no, for that item of clarification as well. Uh, are there any questions from the members of the board, you know, to the APCD? I do have one question. Go ahead, Bill. The, and so at some point they're gonna to have to change out that temporary blower with a permanent blower. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the procedure to accommodate that? Because they'll be uh, down to, to do that. And I would expect that take a few days. This is a question for Dan. Okay, thank you, Member Powers. Yes, the, it's it's our understanding that a the replacement of a blower would take less than 72 hours, which would be allowed under the permit to operate. So they would not be in violation. But if, if the petitioner thinks it would take longer, say a week to replace it, then they would expect to be in violation. And then the board could potentially make that finding that they will be in violation. Very good, thank you. Any other questions from uh, to the APCD from the members of the board? No, I don't see no, I mean, hands raised or anybody actually uh, uh, unmuting themselves, you know. So let's actually, I mean, hear from our petitioner. Uh, you have, you know, seen and uh, heard, you know, I mean, our concerns as well. I mean, the, a couple of the members of the board on this element, uh, but certainly, I mean, your presentation also needs to focus specifically and discreetly on the six findings that we need to make today. We cannot move away from that today. So, I mean, that with that in mind, I mean, I believe that maybe uh, Ms. Rigby, will you be the one uh, making that presentation? Uh, thank yeah, it's, you. it's uh, thank you, Chair. Um, it, we're, we're going to um, hear also from directly from our maintenance supervisor, who I feel like is the most apt to uh, give the description of the maintenance and the timeline for that. But um, I will be starting off the presentation and be handing it off appropriately from there. Uh, sh shall I screen share or did, um, no, you know, I mean, th this will only be controlled, you know, by Madam Clerk. Yeah. You know, so Madam okay. Clerk has the control exclusively. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I'm pulling it up right now here. Oh, let's see. I thought I had it open. Okay. Okay, can you all see my screen now? We can indeed, thank you. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. I am Lori Rigby. I'm the compliance officer for the city of Oceanside Water Utilities. We also have Scott Spiegel, uh, chief plan operator, Rudy Guzman, uh, division manager, as well as Ryan Williams, who is the maintenance supervisor. Um, and uh, next slide, please. So I just wanted to provide a brief background for any of the board members who may not have been at the previous hearings. Um, we had our odor scrubber unit 1510 blower fan failed in late October. The blower fan had been replaced three years prior to the failure and all preventative maintenance was performed. But when strong oxidants are present, wear and tear can be accelerated. So this was not an anticipated failure, it was still a fairly young blower. So I do wanna make sure I point out that this was a well-maintained unit. Um, the city um, had a, an extra blower that was on site that would have potentially been able to be used within a 24 hour period. They do have left-handed and right-handed units. It turned out the one we had was the opposite orientation of the one we needed. Um, so immediately the same day we um, started ordering the replacement blower and the new media that was all quoted that same day. Um, the city of Oceanside has an extensive vendor packet that is required for all vendors who work with the city. Um, and those had to be done first as both vendors had let their vendor pack packets expire. Um, those were all accelerated. We actually received those in about half the time um, of our normal timeline. Um, the emergency variance was granted to the city on November 3rd, 2021, and the interim variance was granted on November 18th, 2021, as we were continuing work to get the replacement parts um, ordered. Uh, next slide, please. 
<clears throat> so as I mentioned, um, the city staff did attempt to replace the blower with an existing unit the day of the failure. It is our primary goal to return equipment to operation as soon as possible. Um, we did. We do have uh, mechanics that are full time employed with the city. Uh, the unit needed to be rebuilt to fit, which we are able to do in house. And so this has been completed and it's going to be installed um, very shortly here. Actually, we'll be providing an update on that. Um, we had ordered the media to replace in the scrubber as well. Um, that vendor packet had to be redone. That was occurring over the first part of November. And the order was received yesterday afternoon as a 12-8-2021. Um, again, this was in a fraction of the time as we typically see for these vendor packets to be approved. It could still be in process right now for other types of vendor packets. Um, we also received the purchase order for the blower yesterday as a 12-8-2021. And in addition, as far as preventative actions, we are currently budgeting in our next fiscal year for 22-23 um, which starts July 1st, we are going to be budgeting for two replacement blowers to have on the shelf in the event that a future blower has a similar failure. The reason why we didn't have a backup and we needed the emergency variance is because that backup had been used three years previously to unit 1510. And these blowers are over $50,000. It does take some planning to get them on the shelf. So I do want to make sure I mention that as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the current status of the repair is that the new media has been received yesterday. I've provided a couple of images here. You can see the media here in the scrubber window and the amount of media that we received. That's why some of this takes a little bit of time. It's a very large order. Um, our plant is also currently under construction. We have to plan for space and availability of equipment and people. Um, I've been discussing with both um, Heather and Mary that we are starting up um, a $70 million uh, plant in the next two weeks. There's a lot going on, um, but we have been prioritizing this repair in the midst of that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the rebuilt blower and the media is most likely going to be replaced next week. We typically do not do large repairs right before a weekend when we have limited staff. Um, so if uh, Ryan wants to speak to that a little bit more, he's welcome to jump in. Uh, but the estimated timeline, I was talking to our vendor, uh, New York Blower Company, on their current lead time for the new blower. And I was told the new blower takes 17 to 19 weeks. And then it's an extra week to ship mm -hmm. depending on uh, driver availability. So we're estimating that to be completed, hopefully in April or may, I wanna give us a little wiggle time if there's a supply chain disruption or driver shortage, but their manufacture time is 17 to 19 weeks. So uh, Ryan, if you wanna jump in, um, add any additional updates on the equipment repair. This is Scott Spiegel. I wanna jump in real quick and just let you know that the media was already installed. So the media is in and ready to go. And then I'll turn it over to Brian. Ryan. Yeah, we're planning on installing this next week as far as our blower. Uh, we're anticipating being able to wire that up in the shop and then possibly have it installed no later than Thursday of next week with a, with a final uh, runtime. Uh, we are asking that there be some kind of understanding that we do need to run this in place for at least uh, a 72 hour period of time to make certain that what we have done is correct and that we do not have any failures beyond that. Um, and then once that does occur, then we can reach back out to Lori, give her an understanding that, yes, we've passed our 72-hour test and that everything appears to be going correct. And then she can update uh, the APCD. If that's OK, then we'll continue to move on. Um, if there's other understandings that would like to be uh, discussed, we can do that as well. All right. Thank you, Scott and Ryan. Uh, next slide, please. And I did want to circle back um, to the chemical usage on the blower, and I'm probably going to let Scott um, discuss this part, but I do want to give the board a visual about how scrubbers operate when they're in typical operation in the current situation with the, rubber, the scrubber that is disconnected and non-operational. So Scott, did you want to give a description of the process with um, my beautiful Excel drawing you see here? I'm clearly an artist. So 
this is just a visual. This is not a 100% accurate drawing. I just want to give a picture of what's going on. Right on. And yeah, so in normal operations, that blower would be in place. It would, it would be grabbing the foul odor off the tank and bringing it through, through the scrubber, through the two, the two stage media. And then at the same time, <clears throat> the chemical the chemicals will be pumped according according to the the sensors on there so you got your ORP and then you got your pH so as as needed they would adjust themselves it's all automatic and and bring bring the uh, the um, scrubber in into compliance and then at this at the same time you got your recirc water and, the, and those flow rates go, go in at the same time and uh, and then the addition of, of um, makeup water, but that's that's basic how that scrubber works. But with without the blower, there's like you guys just agreed that there's no reason to have the chemical on. So <clears throat> that was another question I had: Are we are we now that we ta just talked about it? Are we able to turn the chemical off until the blower fan gets installed? Um, but yeah. And if you if you go to the next slide, you'll see the current setup with the blower of where it's disconnected and, and kind of what's going on in that unit. Yeah, so the, the blower is basically the heart of the system. If it if it's not in place, there's nothing there's nothing really um, playing out. There's, it's not bring, bringing in any foul order. So the chemicals, as we said, are just being dropped dropped into the basin and then wasted out the drain. So. Okay. All right, Scott, thank you for uh, that walkthrough. And if we could go to the um, final slide here. Uh, this is the city's request for the board's consideration. Uh, the city requests that the variance is approved by the APCD board. Uh, the city is requesting to be able to turn off the chemical dosing as it's not stripping odors from the discharged emissions and the chemical additions could even damage the existing equipment if it's not fully operational. Um, we're requesting up to one week test run on the temporary equipment. I believe Ryan said that three days is sufficient um, to deem the temporary repair successful. And the city is also requesting reinstatement of this variance if the temporary if the temporary blower does fail um, to prevent delays from having to restart the process. So I did want to request that the board consider that. Um, and I appreciate your time and letting us make this presentation to you. Thank you so much. I mean, no, no, thank you so very much. Certainly, I mean, it brings into perspective again, uh, diagrammatically, how, uh, you know, this equipment is actually operating, which is uh, always a visual, it's really very good, you know, I mean, so uh, some of us are a little bit more familiar, you know, with the process, you know, than maybe other, I mean, on the, uh, uh, I mean, on the, on the hearing board. And uh, I have, you know, I mean, certainly, I mean, a couple of questions. So we're here, you know, I mean, Ms. Rigby, I mean, and petitioner for uh, making sure that we bridge the gap, you know, for you to come into compliance. Mm -hmm. And coming into compliance, it would be, you know, that, I mean, the repair of that blower and the replace, it, it will be the replacement blower, you know, I mean, so, uh, which seems as though, you know, that is going to be addressed, I mean, the, uh, pretty much any time now. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but definitely, you know, that time, you know, is really very shortened. Should the blower actually, uh, you know, test? And that's definitely, you know, I mean, the gentleman, again, I mean, that with Mr. Scott Spiegel addressed my concern. You need to test it in C2. You need to adjust it. I mean, you need to actually have a good run. I mean, before you say, okay, I mean, I, I can definitely see, you know, that the blower is uh, uh, definitely working, I mean, as intended. But extending it, you know, I mean, that to an um, unknown time, I think, you know, it's going to be a little bit difficult, I mean, that to do. And definitely, there's no reinstatement, I mean, of a regular variance, no per okay. se. So it would actually have to have a, a very clear, I mean, and this is why 
This is an example of why timelines are so important, even if they are just pie in the sky, but at least that you're thinking about that thought process of saying, I install it, give me 30 more days, not to, I mean, test it in situ. If I actually accept it, you know, then on this day I will call, you know, I mean, the, the, the APC DSS, okay, variance is over and things of that nature. See, th these are the little details, you know, that, uh, uh, for which a timeline is, is good. But I mean, I definitely see, I have to commend all of you folks. I mean, I have done this, I mean, three times already uh, on how seriously you're taking uh, every single step. Okay, right. and, that speaks, and no, that speaks really very highly. I mean, and I, I have, you know, more examples out there that I think that need to be shared you know, with everybody, but this is a very good example, you know, I mean, of, you know, government doing the right thing, you know, because we as human beings do the right thing. So, I mean, but that, that's a, a digress. Let's actually get back here, okay? You know, so you're definitely, I mean, the, uh, uh, out of compliance. I mean, the, uh, we definitely see that from an emergency, excuse me, from a social public service, I mean, aspect, uh, you are, working as expeditiously as possible, I mean, to come back into compliance, you know, so that is no problem. Shutting down is not, I mean, an option for you. <laughs> I mean, and uh, requesting something much more, uh, much faster than this, I mean, it would be a, a, an unreasonable taking of property, which would be finding B on all of these findings that I'm actually talking about, okay? Uh, the, the next finding would be, I mean, that what, what would be the benefit, I mean, the, uh, to the environment, you know, I mean, if I will not be granting uh, a variance, or let me actually ask this question, you know, I mean, the, the other way around, what will be the impact to the environment if these variants were not granted? Um, we don't feel that there is a significant impact. Um, I, I've worked at many plants where aeration basins are not covered. Um, you know, this is a kind of more of a nuisance condition more than a, you know, serious emission and, and public kind of health and, and safety issue. Um, you know, we have lift stations that do the same volume that are, you know, they, that have a stack that are covered, our um, aeration basin is covered and is still going through that stack. So we feel that we're um, still in favor of public health and safety, even without that blower. Um, so if this were a different process, we may have to find a, a much more urgent temporary solution. Um, luckily this is on an aeration basin. So um, we feel like we're taking the most appropriate steps given the, the process that we're uh, dealing with. But we're still taking this seriously. We still have expedited, expedited the processes as much as we've had control over. And the city, not just the group that you speak with, the city as a whole has been really expediting these processes. Our management analysts, our city manager's office, our director have all been taking this just as seriously as the people that you're seeing sitting here in these hearings. So. No, no, much appreciated though. You know, I mean, the next funding actually speaks not to curtailing operations. Uh, and uh, could you actually curtail operations to the maximum, you know, I mean, the okay. <laughs> extent possible? Hey. I think Jerry we'll Rodriguez, the you, answer to do You can it, stop but... flushing. I mean, you live in Oceanside, right? Let's see how that one goes <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, people like to be able to use their water, to use their drains, to use their toilets. So this is uh, regardless of what's going on, the plant flow is coming in. It's why, unfortunately, sewer, sanitary sewer overflows exist. If something's backed up, it's got to go somewhere, and it's usually a low spot. So as much as we would love to have an off button for a multitude of reasons, we do not. Yeah, I mean, or an off button that says take it to the other, I mean, the treatment plant. I mean, so yeah, I that doesn't happen happening. either. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. happen either, per se. I mean, that's so... Uh, yeah, those are the, the questions that I have at, I mean, at this point in time. Um, oh, one more question. I mean, the, um, what is a reasonable time? That may not be you know, a question for you, Ms. Rigby, you know, I mean, but I definitely want to, you know, see, you know, Mr. Scott Spiegel, I mean, and, and I'm sorry, I think it's Daniel, I mean, the gentleman in uh, the back. Brian Williams. Brian. Brian, thank you, thank you. I mean, the, uh, what would be a reasonable period, you know, because you do need to test, you know, this engine in C2, I mean, this blower rather in C2, you know, so, so something that we need to think about, I mean, on that timing. I'm gonna assume, 
uh, I shouldn't say assume, I'm going to gather with what we've done as far as the, uh, the bolstering of this repair, that we could probably have it installed. And then on a test mode, uh, I, I agree with you, it, no less than 30 days, Chair Rodriguez, probably would be our best case scenario. That way, if there were to be an interim failure, we would be able to notify you and keep that uh, up to date. Uh, but I would assume within that three-day period that we would be able to have some understandings uh, if we were going to have a major failures within there. As soon as we fire this thing up, it's going to be pretty pretty easy to, to gather and understand that if we're going to have uh, uh, vibrations, uh, it should be pretty quick to, to understand where it's coming from. Um, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I can't see everything. And so what I can see and what I've determined currently in our, in our current state is if we were to install today uh, and put it on a test mode uh, for a 24 hour period, uh, we should be able to start to see some things within that three day period, no doubt we'd be able to see most definitely. Um, and then we should be able to notify you within that, with that uh, mechanical timeline. Uh, if, if it, if I, I don't disagree that a 30 day period would be better. Um, but I don't want to ask for something that, uh, is unreasonable. Okay. We, we, we need to make the finding. I mean, that, but I think, you know, those findings and decisions also need to incorporate, uh, an element of reasonableness. Yes, ma'am. So, I mean, the, okay, you know, so that's, again, you know, just my view. I'm going to open this, I mean, uh, question and answer session to the other members of the board. I mean, are there any questions, you know, I mean, to petition by the members of the board? Member Hurst? I don't have any questions, quite honestly, and mm -hmm. that may be uh, more related to the fact that I'm used to talking about viruses than I am about um, blower <laughs> fans. I just wanted to say that I, I appreciate the opportunity for both of the PowerPoints to be included today, because at least for me, these are always very critical outlines for me to review. I, I only wish we could get them earlier so that we could get them before the meeting because I like to spend extra time with this material. But from my perspective and from everything I've listened to, I really want to commend the city because I, again, I am new to this endeavor, but I feel that it's such a moving target that they've done everything that I would have expected um, in the effort that they've made to provide us with as much information as they had available to them. So I just wanted to make the comment that I commend what you have done because compared to other uh, petitions I've seen, uh, I, I would just say your performance for me has helped me learn considerably. Thank you, Member Hurst. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? You know, I mean, the, uh, to the petition. You know, I mean, the Member Hurst. I mean, you're right on point. I mean, certainly, I will be keeping one of these. I mean, that in my back pocket and says, "Yes, we can do this. <laughs> yes, we can do this." Let me give an example. <laughs> so, I mean, the, any other questions? Wow. Okay. You know, I mean, that's so, Emily, I mean, that I just want to ensure, though, that from a legal aspect of the house and the procedural aspect of the house, uh, definitely the information that I provided Ms. Rigby and petitioner is correct. And I am referring to the aspect of reinstating a variance, you know, so uh, could you please speak a little bit to that? As to reinstating a variance? Mm-hmm. Um, would you mind clarifying? I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> but petitioner, I mean, the, uh, made a request. I mean, as part of, you know, I mean, her presentation that, you know, the city of Oceanside, you know, would like, you know, for the board to consider a reinstatement of the variance if something kind of, you know, goes away, I mean, downstream. Uh, my feedback was, you know, that we really do not reinstate the variance because we're coming to, you know, variance closure very quickly. So that's uh, procedurally, you know, that needs to, you know, the, the, uh, it needs the process needs to get started all over again because we're just bridging, you know, the the gap of compliance, you know, with this one. So I just want for you to speak about, you know, I mean, the procedure about reinstatement of the variance. Can that happen or not? 
always, I do not believe there's any authority to extend a variance if that's the, the issue. Um, we would go through the procedures all over again to request a new variance. <laughs> yeah, just wanted confirmation on that one. I mean, the... <laughs> <laughs> so, no, sorry, it. sorry for the confusion. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. I just want to I mean definitely, I mean, confirmation of that. I was pretty sure, but I just wanted a legal confirmation <laughs> on that one. Okay. You know, so I mean that uh okay, so I just want to actually go back, you know, I mean that to uh of uh, uh Mr. Williams, I mean, and Mr. Uh Spiegel. Um uh, uh, and again, you know, I mean that you you hear that my proposal, I mean, of 30 days, I mean, from the, you know, day of installation or something like that. I mean, so uh, you indicated that that would be a reasonable time uh, for testing, I mean, and uh, adjusting, I mean, maybe, you know, if there's a need to do that. Uh, uh, so is that okay? Yes, for termination of the variance? Okay. But say, can I have a question real quick, Scott? Yes, please. Um, so say, say it fails, like, that same day and it's catastrophic where it's it, it fails and it's not going to be able to run and we have to go how long was it six it was uh 19 weeks 19 weeks to for the brand new one to get here so at that point we can't say that the variance is is just reinstated or or we we, we have to get a new variance no, I mean, the, okay, so so let me, uh, I just wanted to make sure though that I actually can break this up a little bit. I mean, for example, you you would be installing, I mean, that your blower, you test it for 30 days. It yeah, works in, in those 30 days. that we're going to do. Okay, so it works in those 30 days, then the variant stops. If it fails catastrophically, however, I mean, then uh, uh, during that 30 day period, during that 30 day period, not afterwards, that three day period, I mean that then uh, we could actually extend it maybe, you know, I mean, to the uh, to the June uh, period. But other than that, I mean that then you would actually have to look at a new variance. So you get installation, 30 days of testing, okay? Yeah. Nothing happens, you adjust, everything works not fantastic. We have breached the gap of compliance. Okay. I, and then I the compliance, the, the variance would end. If within those 30 days and everything that you've done, I mean, the arrest, you know, almost resurrect the thing actually, you know, from nowhere, it fails. This is a massive, you know, failure. Like, you know, you cannot do anything about it. Then, you know, I mean, I would definitely consider, I mean, a later date, I mean, on the on the compliance date. But that is up to the, I mean, that so that's part, I mean, I guess, of the negotiation, I mean, and that that and the compliance oversight, you know, that the APCB would actually have, you know, because within 30 days, you need to, you know, tell them, yeah, this works, variance ends. If not, then you actually have to prove, you know, that, you know, this is a, a, a major, I mean, the catastrophic failure, I mean, and then you need, you know, to continue with the variance for a longer time. I mean, the, uh, uh, Emily is actually raising her hand. Okay. So um, the board does have authority to mod make certain modifications mm -hmm. to variance orders, but that would also come before the board so that we wouldn't be able to just extend that without a, a hearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, so I mean, that, so that's that's what I'm thinking on that one as well, you know, so if it's not within 30 days, they can come back and we can modify it uh, under the same money and everything else. But I mean, the, if it's after 30 days, that's, that's about it. I mean, again, I'm just only one person thinking. Yeah, I mean, no, that I, you 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 made sense, so I I understand now. Okay, and I, good. And the way Ryan and those guys are gonna, his mechanics are gonna work on it. I don't think we're gonna have an issue, but I just wanted to make sure, just in case. Okay, I mean, no, definitely. I mean, I I truly understand. I mean, your work on that one, you know. So, uh, Bill, I mean, the uh, from the engineering standpoint, I mean, that do you have any comments in the matter? I have no comments. Okay, I mean, uh, so uh, so so you would actually say you no know, that breaking it up, you know, the thirty days closing, if no issues, and then if not, you know, modifying it. I mean, the in the future. Yes, yeah, I I agree with that approach. I'm taking notes. I mean, so. So, okay. Uh, so, Madam Clerk, I would like to see, uh, hold it here. I mean, Member Spencer has no, his hand uh, uh, risen, okay, so. 
Yeah, thank you. You know, I really think that the city of Oceanside has shown a lot of due diligence in terms of being on top of everything and getting these repairs done. So I really think that they deserve some consideration um, in terms of getting, in terms of the dates to A, get the temporary repair done, B, uh, make sure that it works, and C, have a plan in place just in case it fails. So I think that uh, if... If, if the city, a timeline that the city finds reasonable and a process that the city finds reasonable for us to uh, have in place to either extend or revisit or whatever else we need to do. And if we need to adjust dates in terms of our hearings to keep them from having to go through the whole process again, mm -hmm. I, I think that um, they've shown the, you know, the due diligence that uh, that kind of thing really should be considered. Absolutely, I agree with you, you know, Member Spencer, you know, so that's why I'm trying to, you know, uh, make some some suggestions on the crafting on, on that uh, uh, timeline, you know, because as you said, I mean, we've all said it, I mean, we've recognized it, uh, they have done really very well, you know, I mean, and that also needs to be recognized and commended and supported, you know, so that's it. Uh, <clears throat> so, Madam Clerk, could you please go back, you know, I mean, to the presentation, I mean, from the APCD, I would like, you know, to ask APCD a couple of questions, particularly at the uh, suggested conditions. Okay, yes, let me pull that up here. Thank you. Well, um, Chair Rodriguez, what slide were you um, wanting to look at? Is this the yeah. correct one? No, you landed on the right one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I mean, the uh, Heather, I would like you know, definitely to take a look at your wording and your interpretation so that we are aligned. Uh, it says, or when the temporary, you know, if you actually go to the second uh, paragraph there, uh, third line, uh, it says, uh, granted you know, until January 9th, I mean, or when the temporary repair is operational, whichever comes first. Is that, are we talking about the very same thing here? I mean, allowing them, you know, some time to uh, test, you know, the blower, I mean, after, okay. Good, you know, I mean, that's so, uh, so if, you know, the blower is actually installed, you know, I mean, next week or so, I mean, the, and they keep, you know, that timeline, uh, you say, I mean, that January 9th, I believe that, you know, if we actually give them a 30 days, I mean, from January 9th would be, would not be deviating, you know, I mean, that much? Correct. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, About I mean, a month. I just, I just don't want to pin them, you know, to a date that possibly, you know, they may miss because Correct. I mean, the, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next week, you know, so. Uh, you know, my, my suggestion would be, you know, I mean, granting the regular variance, I mean, for that condition, yes, blower, I mean, the, uh, uh, that would cover repairs, I mean, and testing. Uh, and then, I mean, the, uh, you know, re, I mean, re, let's see, you know, I mean, what is it? No, I mean, repair, I mean, and testing for 30 days, no post repair. I mean, and then should all elements, I mean, the, uh, find that the blower is fully operational and supporting, of, you know, and fully operational, then, you know, that's when the variance, you know, would end. Dan, would you like to add any other additional insights? I believe we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. It's just like massaging a little bit, kind of, you know, that's a sliding scale. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, it Based on what's been discussed about the uh, 30 days or so of testing in situ to determine that it's operational, that's reasonable to us as well. Okay. And then, you know, I mean, certainly, I mean, the, uh, all of those elements, I mean, I guess no come, uh, all the conditions come without saying, I mean, so could you, uh, Miss Madam Clerk, could you please go to slide number four? There you go. So it says notify district within one business day by 5 p.m. when the following milestones are achieved by, uh, okay. 
when it's fully operational temporary, when fully operational temporary repairs, new replacement blower, uh, a new replacement is operational. Okay, so you, I'm, I'm missing maybe, I mean, the, uh, it may be not definitely that, definitely a matter of style, I mean, Heather. It says fully operational temporary repairs. Then the new replacement blower has been received. So you're looking, I mean, beyond the, the January 9th, would that be? With number two or B? If, if the variance is to end by January 9th, then that is not necessarily needed. Okay. Would be my interpretation. Okay. Because I mean, I would not then go back again. This is only a suggestion, okay? You know, so I would definitely say end that. But one of the conditions that I would add is, I mean, that certainly we uh, uh, the petitioner would actually have, you know, the right to come back, you know, I mean, and solicit a hearing based on this variance because it's a regular variance. I mean, that with the request not to modify at a future date if we actually have any major issues. Could could that be done? Uh, Emily? Oh, sure. Um, I was actually thinking along the same things. We would just put this, um, I don't even know if it needs to be a permit condition, as much as we would just notice a potential modification if it's mm -hmm. needed. Um, if it's not needed, the audit can be withdrawn. If it is, we can have the hearing then. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to make it as a condition so that there's, only on, uh, there's no ambiguity in the way we're going to proceed. So, I mean, and in that manner, though, I mean, all parties are clear and uh, particularly the public. So, I mean, that we can definitely put this under this umbrella. That's, that's how I'm thinking about this. I mean, so, uh, if that is so, I know this is gonna be one of the easiest regular variances that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but thank you to you guys in the city of Oceanside. <laughs> okay, good. To me, this is looking, um... To me, this is looking like, um, like, like, like I would agree to approve this. Um, I don't know what the other members are also believing, but I don't know. Maybe we could poll the members before. Do we have a motion? Not, not yet, because no. we need to make the findings. Yeah, not yet. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you know, I mean, that member Schlick, you know, the only thing, you know, that I actually was looking at B and C is that if we end, you know, I mean, the, the, the possibility of ending, you know, this variance, I mean, is after the replacement, you know, uh, um, not the new, but the replacement blower. And then, you know, just leave, you know, I mean, it open rather than to say new replacement blower has received because then, you know, dates have to actually change. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, so that's it. Okay, good, good. I mean, that's so um, do I have a motion or, because uh, we need to make the six findings. Okay, I mean, the, let me actually uh, get, go ahead. Um, I'd like to um, make a motion to make the six findings. Or do so we do we need, one finding at a time? Yes, we need to do one finding at a time. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, you know, there is a form with all the findings. If you can pull that up, then I think, you know, we need to capture uh, the findings, every single one, one by one. Okay, let me, um, give me a minute and I will pull that up. Thank you. Yeah, pretty much in the conversation we made all but one, so we just need to capture them. Thank you so very much. 
You know, I mean, so these are the six okay. findings that we actually need to make. And I believe that this is the first time I think that the board, you know, in the new composition has seen uh, uh, one that is extensive, you know, like this. So we certainly need to provide justification and, uh, uh, and how is it that we came, you know, to the six findings, okay? So uh, all six of them, you know, are there so we can actually take these one by one, you know? So Member Schlick, I mean, if you would like, you know, to, uh, initiated. Yes, um, so I'd like to motion uh, for finding number one, that the petitioner city of Oceanside um, uh, will be in violate is or will be in violation of section 41701 or any uh, rule regulation or order of the district. Uh, in this case, however, I mean, the, so uh, we need to be a little bit more discreet, you know, so uh, and the petitioner is already in violation, I mean, uh, of the rules of the district. I mean, and these are definitely according to the petition. I'm going to pull that up. You know, so. Yeah, I was just looking at that a couple minutes ago as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. You know, it's just a long, long list, as you know. Um, Um, I think it's in the it's in the documents from the previous meeting. That's that's where I pulled it up. The original petition. Yeah, you know, I mean that they're definitely. I mean the uh, in violation of the. Um, let's see. You no, know, I mean I think Rule Twenty One, if I'm not mistaken, and then you know I mean would be uh, Permit APCD Two Thousand Six Dash PTO Dash Nine Two Zero Five Three Zero. Uh, as it pertains to condition number four only for blower number 1500. I'm going by memory here. <clears throat> you know, so. Uh, it's blower 1510, sorry to interrupt. Thank you. You know, so I mean, the, for, for, you know, 1510. You know, so, um, and then, you know, I mean, the, uh, then number two, Member Schlick, do you want to take a, a stop at number two? Uh, yes, um, I'd like, uh, and I motion one thing at a time. Do we vote on each one? one no, you know, we, we, we make the findings and then we vote. Okay. The next finding um, is that due to conditions beyond the reasonable control of the petitioner, requiring compliance would result in either an arbitrary or unreasonable taking of property or the practical closing and elimination of a lawful business. Um, uh, in making those findings, petitioners a public agency, which is the case here, the hearing board shall consider whether or not requiring immediate compliance would impose an unreasonable burden upon an essential public service. Um, I think we have discussed about this um, because this is sewage treatment works. So for purposes of this paragraph, essential public service includes um, here sewage treatment works or water delivery operation. And this is owned and operated by the public agency of the city of Oceanside. No, I mean that. No, thank you so very much. If you allow me you know, to add a little bit, I mean, to that, this is a good you know, learning experience for all of us. Uh, it is not, I mean, the city of Southernside, I mean, as uh, Member Schlick indicated, you know, is an essential public service. As such, uh, not granting this variant would definitely, uh, it would create uh, impact, I mean, to public health, I mean, uh, for the customers, you know, that it services. And it's also, I mean, a public agency uh, solely owned, I mean, and managed you know, by the city of Oceanside. The controls you know, that the uh, petitioner has uh, implemented, you know, have been expeditious, have been complete, and have been in compliance, uh, capturing not only emergency and interim invariances, therefore demonstrating uh, not only good faith effort, but actually all efforts, you know, I mean, of execution uh, to come into compliance. Uh, further, the, uh, uh, the petitioner is going to be accepting uh, conditions, you know, I mean, the, uh, to these variants, you know, that prove right boundaries uh, to bridge the gap uh, and, uh, and have not only develop a plan for correction, but also for prevention and elimination of recurrence. Uh, then item, under, item number three, you know, Member Schlick. Yes, um, that the closing of this facility um, or or the taking of this property would be without a corresponding benefit in reducing air contaminants. 
Um, and I believe that was discussed today in the sense of keeping the aeration basin covered, um, if I'm understanding correctly. Yes, you know, okay. I mean, the, yeah, but very, very good, you know, so, and uh, eventually, you know, we can definitely uh, uh, not shut down, I mean, this, excuse me, you know, I mean, that this uh, essential public service, you know, I mean, cannot be uh, without, I mean, it's permit to operate any needs to continue to operate, you know, so then, you know, number four. Okay, number four, that the applicant for the variance has given consideration to curtailing operations of the source in lieu of obtaining a variance. Um, I mean, I don't think that's really possible with a sewage water treatment plant, but I mean, they, I, I, I okay, so maybe we could skip to the next one. But I mean, I think they've thought of it, but you know, it's just not really possible, right? Co correct, you know, I mean, and that that would be you no know, part of what we would actually capture. That we will say, you know, I mean, with the services, you know, that this essential public service, you know, I mean, provides, uh, shutting down or curtailing operations is not an option. Good job. I mean, the, uh, number five. Okay, number five, during the period the variance is in effect, the applicant will reduce excess emissions to the maximum extent feasible. Um, and I believe to this, to this point, um, they're going to cover the aeration basin. And then also when they're doing the switchovers, it's gonna be a limited amount of time, something like that, right? It's just gonna be less than a day or less than three days at most or something like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, exactly the same, you know, so we need to capture, you know, I mean, as you very uh, effectively said, I mean, so uh, during all that, that, you know, not only, uh, you know, petitioner actually ever laid out plan uh, that would not only cover, I mean, the, the aeration basin when not in maintenance, uh, but also, I mean, has a plan, I mean, to uh, implement and uh, do the change out of this blower uh, as expeditiously as possible, you know, so very good. You know, I mean, and uh, um, and in number six is usually when we go, you know, into the uh, conditions, for example. Uh, so, uh, so during the period of the variance, you know, that starts today, you know, the regular, I mean, it's in defect. I mean, the applicant will monitor or otherwise quantify emissions, I mean, on that. Uh, and uh, um, Madam Clerk, if you can then go back, you know, I mean, to the district's presentation, slide number three. Yes, let me pull that up. Thank you. Perfect. I mean, that's so, uh, you know, on that one, I mean, I would suggest you know, that maybe we capture something on those lines that say, you know, I mean, the, the variance actually, I mean, starts today and uh, it is applied you know, to condition number four, other permit to operate as, uh, you know, mentioned before, uh, as related to uh, blower 1519. I mean, the, and the, uh, and the conditions of the petition are the following, you know, the uh, petition is going to keep the aeration basin covered except during maintenance. A petition is to report any odor complaints by 4 p.m. daily. Uh, the variance, I mean, will be, you know, uh, is in effect. And, uh, uh, and let's see, the variance is in effect and will capture, I mean, the point, I mean, until, you know, 30 days post replacement and testing of the blower. Uh, then petitioner will notify the APCD, in this case, not Heather McGee Hill. I mean, that when the service has been completed, I mean, and they can actually accept, you know, I mean, the conditions. Number four, I mean, the, uh, I would actually include, you know, that uh, should petitioner has a major breakdown in the equipment, then petitioner can uh, request, I mean, uh, a variance hearing based on this variance number, okay, uh, to, to hear the conditions and the project as to how they are going to be addressing uh, their breakdown and their replacement. 
then provide any records uh, of monitoring for items one and two weekly. I mean, to uh, Heather McGee-Hill, you can actually lift this up, you know, from here, I mean, the uh, Madam Clerk, on the above conditions and operational status of the repairs. Yes, I mean, the, I remember Hearst. Um, on the number, on the point number four that you were just discussing, if there is something that happens um, with the blower after it's the replacement blower, after it's been repaired, after it's been operational, do you want to put a time boundary on, you know, how many days running? would deem it compliant versus how much time do they get to test? Is that is that just a known 30 day period? No, I mean, the thing is that, I mean, member Hurst, I mean, the, I see your point not really very discreetly, particularly if you would, would be doing an audit or inspection. I mean, that you want that. Uh, I personally, I mean, and again, you can suggest, I mean, uh, uh, whatever I, see, I think, you know, is deemed reasonable. But the way I, I, I see, you know, particularly, you know, having worked with maintenance folks you know, for so long, uh, sometimes, you no, know, you know, if you cannot give them, you know, I mean, just a day, I would like to give them freedom because not only do they actually have to adjust the blower, but oftentimes they need to adjust the monitoring system on the building management system or equivalent. Or if they actually have SCADA, they need to uh, adjust that. And sometimes they do those things, you know, I mean, get out of whack. So I just want to give them, I think, you know, I mean, a, a way and the flexibility for them to come into compliance without having to say, oh, on the 30 day, because God forbid, you know, that now with the rainy season, they're going to have and also a lot more water. And then what if their resources need to be pushed, I mean, elsewhere. So, I mean, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I, I support that. Okay. That's, that's what I'm thinking. So, no, thank you. I mean, great question. So, I mean, I, I made the motion. I mean, the, do I get a second? Second. Uh, Member Hurst is second, you know, I mean, he's providing the second, you know, so, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, okay, Madam I will Clark, now... could you could you um could you uh maybe summarize uh succinctly what the number I got down the one through three that were from the district um, slide, but could you just um repeat what Chair Rodriguez was adding for number four because I wasn't able to take it down fast enough. I just want to make sure I have it down. Um, well, I would probably ask Chair Rodriguez to re-summarize that because I want to make sure that I have it correctly also. <laughs> Give me two. Let, let me write this down because I'm going to by memory on this one, okay? Okay, you know, I mean, that I'm ready. I mean, petitioner has 30 days post installation of the blower to test and run such blower and render it operational. If during this period, the owner is operational, then the petitioner will contact the district uh, and notify that the variance has ended. <clears throat> 
Uh, otherwise, I mean, it will actually end either notification or 30 days post installation, whichever is sooner, okay? Should, you know, the blower not be operational, I mean, then the district, you know, can solicit the clerk of the board time for a new hearing uh, for a potential modification of this variance. Is that, does that do it? I mean, that Madam Clerk? Yes, that sounds accurate. Okay, thanks. So I get, I mean, that I have a motion. I think, you know, the uh, conditions have been clarified. We have provided an ending, you know, I mean, to the variance. I mean, also an opportunity to the petitioner uh, to make sure, you know, that their unit definitely not only works, you know, but they actually have, you know, the actions that are needed. Um, uh, and uh, definitely we actually have a second. So Madam Clerk. Okay, I will now call a roll. Chair Rodriguez. Yes. Member Hurst. Yes. Member Powers. Yes. Member Schlick. Yes. And Member Spencer. Yes. Okay, that motion passes with all members being present and voting yes and granting the regular variance. Excellent. Well done. I mean, City of Oceanside, well, well done. I mean, I think, you know, that you hear all of us echoing the very same sentiment. And I look, you know, forward for you to being very successful. I mean, definitely in all of your, your preventative measures. Okay. So, I mean, the, uh, are there any other comments from the members of the board or the district before we adjourn? I believe not. Well, if that is the case, I mean, I wish you all, I mean, the happiest uh, of holiday seasons. I definitely look forward to seeing you again, I mean, next year. Take, take time, you know, to rest and enjoy family and uh, take good care of yourself. Until next year. Right. This meeting is a Thank you. Bye.